Hello, I'm Mike Gillis with McKinsey Taxidermy Supply, and today we want to take a few minutes and take you step by step through the process of creating a, a beautiful turkey fan and beard combination mount uh, that you can do yourself at home and uh, add to your uh, trophy collection. All right, uh, we're going to get started. As you can see, we've got our bird. Uh, this is a, a very small, immature bird that uh, Chad killed. I think he shot it out of a pen. But uh, the first thing we want to do is remove the beard. Get that out of the way. It's really quite simple. Uh, we're going to locate the beard. We're going to come right down into the front. Pinch it up. Take your scalpel and cut it right off. We're going to come in here and flesh out just a little bit of the meat. And for now, we'll set that aside. Uh, we'll come back a little later and uh, put some preservative on it when we're preserving the tail as well. Now, a little bit more to getting the tail off. Uh, let me see if we can turn this thing so that you can see. We want to uh, identify the ball of the tail. And it's easy enough to come down to and feel right here on either side. And uh, it's quite easy to determine where the joint is. Now, once you've identified it, back up an inch or so on this back skin to get you some extra skin and extra feathers. We'll trim a lot of these off a little later, but uh, you want to be sure that you've got enough when you're starting. We simply cut through. And uh, as I'm cutting, I'm pulling this skin down. I'm feeling with this finger right here to where the ball of the tail is. Continuing to work the skin down towards it. Uh, the skin is quite thin here, so uh, move slowly and carefully. Try not to cut holes in the skin if you can help it. Again, I'm locating where that ball of the tail is. Now, let's see if you can see, right here's the end of the tail. We're going to cut right through. The spine. our skin on around. This is our underneath skin now, right here. We're cutting back up before we free that skin loose. Now we've separated our turkey tail. Let's set our bird down out of the way. And we can examine what we've got. Pretty nice fan. 
not a lot of damage. A little bit on one end feather, but that's not too bad. We've got plenty of excess skin so that when we get through, we're going to have a lot of these, what I call third stage feathers. Your first stage is the tail quills themselves. The second stage would be these medium length feathers. And then the third stage would be part of the back feathers. It's going to create a nice tiered feather stage. So we've got plenty there. We want to finish skinning. And I simply work this skin down. Take my scalpel and carefully expose the actual underskin. You do not have to have a scalpel, although uh, they're not very expensive and uh, they work awfully well. But you do have to have a very sharp knife, whatever knife you choose. If not a scalpel, uh, if it's a pocket knife, be sure that it's extremely sharp because the more you have to put pressure on something to cut it, the more likely you are to make holes or do damage. Now, we're going to work our way around the ball of the tail. And I'm actually putting a little pressure with this thumb on this skin so that uh, as I'm cutting and separating the meat from the skin, the skin is just rolling away. very important to get the tissue or the meat itself cleaned out to get the bone itself out of the, the, the ball or the root of the tail and to get uh, the fat out and uh, separate the quills. Step one is just turning this skin down to the end of the ball of the tail where the quills actually go through to the outer part of the feathers. We're just about there. Now, I'm going to start removing the meat from the quills. And you'll be able to feel your blade sliding right along. And right in here is the bone. You're sort of cutting against it. Once we've got the top, we're going to roll over and do the same thing at the bottom. You can see the fat beginning to be exposed. You're feeling the bone right here. That's the center. We're going to come back over and work down towards the center from each side. Now, if you carefully feel right around this edge, you'll free that bone up. You should be able to, once you've gotten it freed up, pop it right out. 
leaving nothing but the quills. There we go. The bone comes out nice and clean. And we have nothing left now but the quills. You see right here we have a dry spot. I'm not sure if this was an injury. Uh, but while this thing has been in the freezer, it's gotten a little bit dry here, so you can uh, just spray a little bit of water on it. But now that we've got the bone out of the way, we're going to come in here and uh, start to trim as much of this fat off as we can. Uh, if you leave this fat in, as time goes by, even though you've uh, bonded all of this together and you've got a nice solid tail, if you leave this fat in, as time goes by, it will liquefy and turn into just an oil. Uh, and once it becomes a liquid, it can migrate around. And depending on uh, how good a job you've done, uh, it could actually come to the surface. Uh, you could actually have a, a, a little bit of an odor problem. So you want to get all that out now. I'm separating each individual quill. Let's take my scalpel, run right down in between them. So that each quill is separated. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, now we've got all of our quills isolated and separated. We've got most of the meat out. And now we want to put a little bit of preservative on it and begin the uh, final cleaning of the muscle and the fat off. We get our preservative and we'll be ready to go. Okay, you're going to have plenty of preservative in your kit to do this job. We're going to rub it into the skin and we're going to rub it into the quills I'm going to turn this over to the other side this preserving agent not only uh, works to kill bacteria and keep the skin from spoiling or rotting. It works as a drying agent, so it draws the water or the fluids out of the tissue fairly quick. So it only has to sit for just a few minutes to start penetrating. Just as I'm rubbing it here, you can actually see the meat start to, to roll up. We turn it over, that's already soaking in and it's losing that white powdered appearance. So we just keep rubbing more into it. Next, just take you a wire brush. You can get it anywhere. We sell them. Now this would be the larger size of the two wire brushes that we sell.
to you. Hopefully you can see in the camera how the brush is stripping the fat and the tissue right away. It doesn't take very long to do a good job. I've seen so many turkey fans created over the years. I also want to put a little bit on our the fleshy ball on the end of our beard. And that will be penetrating and preserving that. But it only takes a, a small amount of time and effort. See how that is stripping right off to, uh, to do a, a very good job, a professional job that's going to last a lifetime and not cause you any problems. So take the time to do it. You've got the materials in your kit, use them. See how these feathers are starting to, to open up. You get down in between there. And it's kind of like brushing your teeth. Just do it going side to side. Go up and down. Just keep uh, rubbing your preservative right back in and it will penetrate another little layer of fat. And allow you to strip it right out. Now, put the preservative on there and you can actually just, once you get it all shredded up, you can actually take your fingers and pull off the little strips. close to having this. Look how neat and clean these quills are becoming. Okay. Take us a little pair of scissors. Any household scissors, scissors will work. Come in here and just trim off little excesses. Be careful now because you don't want to cut holes in the skin. You just want to, to get all of this tissue off that you can. Especially this area right back here. This is where the oil gland is. You see where this is opening up? That's letting me know that I'm getting everything out there. There's no need to sew that or anything. You don't want to make a huge hole there, but it's nice to get to the opening of that oil gland. 
Turn it over. Do the same thing over here. A lot of this skin will be trimmed off after we do the the bonding of the tail itself. All right, we've got it uh, in pretty good shape. We're going to put one more layer of preservative on it. And we're going to let it sit for just a few minutes while we're, we're preparing uh, the uh, Bondo section. Okay, I'm going to pull this back over, pull this back down so that this doesn't dry out. And we'll set this aside for now. We'll check a little bit more preservative in the ball of our beard. Set that aside. Okay, we're going to clean up. We're going to prepare for phase two of the process. And we'll be back in just a moment. We're ready to uh, assemble our turkey fan, or, or fan it, uh, and cart it so that it will be in the proper position. Uh, kind of take one last look. When we invert this, we want to shake off any of this unabsorbed dry preservative. You see how separated all of our turkey quills are. We've got all of the meat out. We've got a nice clean skin there to work with. First thing we're going to do is position the tail in the middle of our, a piece of cardboard. Uh, you want to be sure that it's a large enough piece so that you can fan the tail and you've got cardboard all the way around it. All right, we've got it roughly positioned We've got our underneath skin pulled down at the bottom, our upper skin pushed back out of the way so that we've got all of our exposed quills there. Next, we're going to mix a little bit of Bondo type product. Uh, I'm using a product called Bondo Hair today. It's from one of the local parts places. There are uh, a number of products out there. You can use auto, just regular auto body filler. Bondo is a brand name. Uh, every parts place out there has a similar product. This is uh, stronger, a little more expensive. Uh, if you're going to use just plain Bondo, uh, you want to cut some, some hair or chunks of feather or something and mix in it so that it will be heavily bodied like this. Uh, it gives it strength and it also keeps it from being so messy and, and unmanageable when you're trying to pack it around the base of these feather quills. I, uh, I get out an adequate amount But if you decide to use the same type product that I'm using, just go to your local parts place and ask for um, fiber hair or bondo hair or tiger hair. Uh, those are three different brand names for the same basic product. Now, before we put the hardener in it and do this, I want to go ahead and I want to disassemble the panel that comes in your kit. Uh, this is a panel to do the, the fan and the beard. I want to disassemble it 
simply by backing out these two screws. And the reason I want to disassemble it is so that when I'm finished bondoing my tail, I can use a little bit of this material to secure the beard into the, uh, the, the top of the shield. Uh, the panel unit consists of a back panel, a front panel, and a spacer in between. Now, I'm going to go ahead and position the tail and uh, it's still somewhat soft. I've trimmed the excess off, but I haven't let it dry out. So if there's going to be a lag time between the time that you do this and you actually uh, assemble this thing, then uh, stick this back in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer. And all I'm doing is working the tail up into this center hole and you want to be sure that you're not seeing any of the the light base of the beard. I keep saying tail but it's a beard. Um, now we're going to set that aside we're going to take the Bondo hardener that comes with our kit and we're going to mix a little bit into the Bondo being very careful not to do too much if you've never used these types of products before I suggest that you take a little bit and mix it up and, and time it and see how fast it sets. You want to be sure that you've got plenty of working time. Uh, you control how fast it sets by the amount of hardener that you put in it. And the warmer it is, the less hardener it takes. The colder it is, the more. Uh, but it's okay if this thing doesn't set up for two hours after you get through with it. What you don't want is it setting up before you're finished positioning everything. Mix it thoroughly and completely so that there won't be hot and cold spots in it when it cures. Now keep in mind once you've gone this far you're committed. So first thing I'm going to do is take a tiny amount and pack down in this hole so that it is working around the uh, end of the uh, beard. I'm kind of flattening and smoothing it out. Now when that cures, that beard will be securely attached. Next, I'm going to take a small amount and I'm going to pack it underneath the quills and it's okay if you get it on the feathers. In fact, let's turn it over like this. And work this up into the quills. on the underneath side, kind of getting it all on the top, working it down in between the quills. You can see why it's important that you don't make it too hot. You got a little bit of stuff to do here. Wrap a little bit around that outside quill. Okay. We're going to pull this skin up at the bottom a little bit. We're going to position this on our cardboard. Be sure that we've got this worked in the base of all of these quills on top. You don't want gobs and gobs of this stuff because you don't want it too thick. 
you're going to have to get it down in your plywood, remember. Okay. Now, let's set this aside for a moment. We're going to take some of the small T-pins that come in your kit. We're going to take one side, pull it over, take the other side, pull it over. I like a nice complete fan, so I pull both sides over until they're touching. Space this out. Pay attention to your center feathers. Lay one strip of cardboard just beyond the secondary line of feathers or right at the edge of them. I stick a T-pin in both pieces of cardboard. I come over here, check your feather placement. You don't want any gaps. Take a nice peek across your bottom line and make sure that they're the same. Actually, I don't think we're going to need the gloves on that hand anymore. Notice that I try to put my T-pin through just in front of where a quill is in the cardboard so that it's kind of helping to hold it. I take my third and final strip and I lay it in the middle. Always keeping an eye on the spacing of your feathers and positioning your pins just in front of the feathers. You can put as many pins as you need in it. That should be plenty. All right. Now, pay attention to this third line of feathers and this secondary line of feathers. Have them evenly spaced. And hopefully you can see, as I am mashing this out, our Bondo material is oozing out down here at the bottom. You can actually take a little bit of paste wax and wax your cardboard if you want, as long as you're going to stay with it, or even lay a piece of plastic under it, but as long as you're going to stay with it and peel this off in a timely manner, it's not a big deal. Now, I like to take a piece of cardboard and put on top and press down, and I like to put a weight. on top of it, right on top of the arch, so that there's a little bit of pressure and it will keep this flat and as low as you can get it. Once you've got your fan spread, everything is even. Take one last glance. Then you're going to sit it aside and let it dry. We're going to sit it right back here for now. We set that aside, and it's going to dry for a week 
two weeks, at least you know five or six days. Uh, you want not only the Bondo to cure, which that initial cure is going to take place in uh, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on how much hardener or catalyst you mix in it. Now, we're going to come over here and grab a tail that we have done earlier. And as you can see, we've got our three basic lines of feathers, uh, the, the quills, then the secondary line, and the third, and, and then a, kind of a fourth line there. Uh, we're going to lay these down. We're going to uh, check and see this is beginning to set up already, so our timing was pretty accurate. I'll let that sit for just another moment. And we're going to prepare our panel to reassemble. Lay a piece of cardboard up. And the first thing I want to do is attach the hanger that comes in the kit. We're going to take our hanger, position it in the center, take a pencil or a pen, Trace around the opening. The two holes. We're going to first drill a small pilot hole. Or our screws. Now, this is very important. This is uh, cured hardwood oak, solid oak. You've got to drill a pilot hole in it so that you remove the risk of, of, of splitting the wood. If you just force your screw into it, you, you could have a problem with splitting or cracking the panel. But you don't want to drill your pilot hole all the way through. Um, just get it started about the depth of your screw. Then we take a larger bit and we come up where we traced for the opening. We start down straight. Then we angle up slightly. Always being sure that your, your cardboard or your pad, you can use a towel or whatever you want, is clean. There's nothing under there to, to scar or damage your panel. The reason for countersinking this hole is so that the screw that you put in the wall will go up into the wood and your panel will hang perfectly flush against the wall. Now, we're going to position the hole, the hanger over the holes. Start the first screw. Then go to the second one. You should get it started. Run it down nice and tight. Now, we've got our hanger there. We're almost ready to assemble. I want to position this about where it's going to be. Put my pin down here, and you can see that the top of this is almost flush with the screws. So you want to see where your screws are. You can use a straight edge. And you want to come up a good inch or so into here. And the reason I'm doing that is we've got very strong durable material here that we've used to set these feathers in this fan. 
and not only are we going to compress the tail into it, but we're going to run a screw uh, into this material. So we mark above where this is going to line up. We take our drill. I like to uh, use either a larger bit or a burring bit and do a countersink so that the uh, head of the screw will be below the surface of the wood. All right. Now, we take our three screws, or two of our three screws. We start them back in the panel. Run them through until they come up. We align our cap piece And we've got, we want to create a little bit of a gap here. Let's see if we've got enough so that our tail will slide down into it. You can use a screwdriver. or anything. Now, once we get it in, we want to, uh, to be sure that it's centered up. And you can use uh, a ruler or a straight edge. This is going to need to slide this way a little, so let's loosen it just a little bit so that we've got more play. There we go. Slide it, be sure that it's worked all the way down in. You can kind of gauge these feathers on each side and look at your top feather just to be sure that it's in line. Oops. slot. Now we're going to stand it up. Tighten our screws a little bit. Again, we want to take a quick glance. Make sure that everything is even and centered. Adjust these feathers. Very good. Now, we're going to take our last screw and we're going to run it directly into the tail. Tighten these. You can uh, evenly space these feathers in the back if you like. Sit it down one more time, check everything, 
Be sure your feathers are properly aligned. And evenly spaced. All right. And there we have our completed turkey fan. Groom the tips. And there we go. Ready to hang on the wall. If you have any questions, once you receive your kit and you get started, uh, don't hesitate to call the 800 number there. Uh, we have a, a, a full text staff that uh, will be glad to help you through any problems that you might have but it's just as simple as it looked on our video. Thank you very much for joining us today and uh, good luck with your turkey fans.